came across yet another news story about how doing business in the West, doing business in high tax places, and putting all of your eggs in one basket is just not a good idea. Today, I'm going to tell you the story of one New York restaurateur who's closing up shop and saying, this is not the place where I can be treated best. I'm going to tell you a story and share what I think you need to do if you're an entrepreneur in the West right now. Hey guys, I'm Andrew Henderson from Nomad Capitalist. You can learn more about who we are and what we do in helping successful seven and eight figure entrepreneurs at nomadcapitalist.com. Here's a story that someone sent to me. It was linked to on the Drudge Report, American news site, and it's on dnews.com. And it goes like this. For years, Bryant Park Grill and Cafe in Midtown Manhattan has been one of the country's top grossing restaurants. The star property in Arc Restaurant's portfolio of 20 restaurants around the United States. Bryant Park, very nice place in the midtown of Manhattan. And uh, this company has a restaurant there. But what propelled it to the top has vanished. The tourists are gone. The office towers surrounding it are largely empty. And the restaurant's 1,000-seat dining room is closed. Instead, dinner is cooked and served on its patio. And the scaled-down restaurant brings in about 12 grand a day, an 85% plunge. In revenue, the CEO said. Five months into the pandemic, the drastic turn of events at businesses like this one are part of, uh, that are part of national chains show how the economic damage in New York has in many cases been far worse than elsewhere in the United States. In the heart of Manhattan, national chains including JCPenney, Kate Spade, Subway, and Le Pan Quotidien have shuttered branches for good. Goes on to say how Michael Weinstein, the chief executive of Arch of Arc Restaurants, who owns the Bryant Park Grill and Cafe and 19 other restaurants, said he will never open another restaurant in, in New York. Here we get to the good part. Of Arc's restaurants, five Manhattan restaurants, only two have reopened. What the article doesn't say is thanks to the mayor and the governor. While its properties in Florida, where the virus is far worse, is far worse, have expanded outdoor seating with tents and tables into their parking lots, serving almost as many guests as they had indoors. Mr. Weinstein says there's no reason to do business in New York. He said, I can do the same volume in Florida in the same square feet as I would have in New York with my expenses being much less. The idea was that branding and locations were important. Listen to that again. The idea was that branding and locations were important, but the expense of being in this city has overtaken the marketing that says that you need to be there. And the article goes on and talks about doom and gloom in New York. And obviously we've seen many big retailers in countries like the U.S. go bankrupt during the COVID pandemic. But there's a couple things I, I take away from that. The, the, the last thing, most importantly, this group, very successful restaurant group, bought into the idea that they had to buy into the branding and the location of what I call the name brands. New York City, name brand. Now, New York City, I have great fond memories of going there. People who are there now telling me it's going downhill. The subway doesn't work. It feels like a third world country. Increasing crime, lots of problems. But these businesses, for years, they succeeded by buying into name brands. We've said that countries are name brands. The United States, one of the most well marketed brands on earth. Europe, well marketed brand. All the countries that people are going and investing in, super well marketed. Are these countries any safer? Then, some places, no doubt. But not in all other places. There are plenty of off brands that we've talked about in our videos and on our website that are just as safe, that have more private property rights, that have higher returns, that have lower taxes, that have fewer regulations. Those things are inherently safe to me, but I get people flock to the name brands. And now Mr. Weinstein of Arc Restaurants is saying, no more. I'll do business in Florida. I don't have to buy into the name brand. I don't have to be in the center of Midtown Manhattan and have this prestigious brand. I'm a business owner. I'm trying to make money and I'm going to go where I'm treated best in order to make money. Go where you're treated best is only natural. So he's going to Florida. Now, I always argue, if you're going to move your business, you might as well move it as far as you can go to the best place possible. Once you're moving, you're moving, right? Now, in his case, they already had restaurants in Florida. They're just deciding to expand there because that is where they are treated best. And I bet if I were able to talk to Mr. Weinstein and talk to him about some of the markets that we do business in, he would be astounded by how easy it is to open a restaurant in some of these countries in the emerging world. And you'd have far less competition there. 
But that is a side point. Uh, the issue is high-tax states, high-tax countries, increasingly difficult to do business in. We told a similar story a number of months ago about a gentleman who had a chain of sandwich shops, started in San Francisco, finally closed down in the city of San Francisco, wasn't worth it anymore, took two years to open a business. And what I see is we're seeing more entrepreneurs, more business owners waking up to the idea that what worked 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 50 years ago, perhaps would even help them start their business and succeed for the very first time, no longer works. When people ask me, you know, Andrew, don't you think the United States is still the best place to invest? That's where you're from. I said, yeah, maybe when my parents were growing up, it may have been and probably was among the best places back then because the Malaysias, the Georgias, the Brazils, the Colombias, the Mexicos, um, all these different countries that now offer potential, they didn't exist or they weren't accessible to many people. Now they do and now they are. And now you can go there and start a business with far less money, far less experience, far less competition, far fewer regulations, and they'll welcome you. Sometimes they'll give you a bloody passport. They'll give you a citizenship if you start a big enough business. They'll give you a residence permit. They'll give you tax breaks for coming and hiring workers who are already far less expensive than whatever the Bryant Park Grill and Cafe is paying their workers. It's just a far easier business experience. And I'm seeing more and more people who are realizing that just because something once was does not mean it will always be. And, of course, the risks associated with having the Bryant Park Grill and Cafe are when New York City shuts down, something people thought was unimaginable, but when it does happen, you're out of business. And now those high rent costs, high staff costs, the labor laws that make it difficult to get rid of people, all the different regulations, you've still got to carry many of those costs. It's driven a lot of people during this pandemic into bankruptcy because they simply can't carry the costs. It's why I've talked about why I have absolutely zero debt and I keep cash on hand so that I can run my business for years into the future without one single dollar of revenue. Most businesses in high tax states and high tax countries can't say anything close to that. And many of them can only make it three months, six months. And so preparing yourself for the worst case scenario, understanding that once what once worked may not always work, even what got you to the top is, may not be what keeps you there. I think people like Mr. Weinstein should look at where can we take our business internationally. Many celebrity chefs open restaurants all over the world, and they may not be opening them in places for their tax benefits, but they are diversifying around the world. They have restaurants in France, restaurants in Italy, restaurants in Singapore, in China, in Macau, in the United States. They are globally diversified. And if one place takes a hit, their whole restaurant empire is not going to crumble to the ground. I think every business should take a cue from that. And I do think that particularly if you have an on the ground business, it's worth looking at what is the uh, international expansion plan for expansion's sake, but what is also the, uh, the asset protection plan basically for your business. That when New York City comes in and says, you know what, we hate small business now more than we ever did. When New York State comes and puts crippling regulations, or when the United States as a country decides to make your life difficult as a business owner, you do not have to rely on them. You do not have to sit as a sitting duck and emotionally decide how you're going to deal with that. You'll just say, you know what, I'm packing my bags and I'm going to be part of my empire in other parts of the world where I'm treated better. This is the realization I want every business owner to have. It's a lot harder for me to help a restaurant chain uh, with offshore tax savings. The business is there. It's sitting on the ground. There's not nearly as much that you can do unless you become Starbucks. Uh, but there are opportunities to expand your business and to make sure that you are not captive to one city, one state, or one country. Business succeeds by going where it's treated best. How can Nomad Capitalist help you? Four ways. Number one, subscribe to our channel and click the notification bell to make sure you get our new video every day. Number two, get a copy of Nomad Capitalist, the book. You'll learn a lot of my personal experiences over a dozen years of studying this stuff, as well as exactly some of the strategies that you can use to build your Nomad Capitalist plan. Number three, if you're not sure where to start, but you want to come and learn from my team and I, you want to come and mingle with like-minded people. Learn more about our live conference, Nomad Capitalist Live. It's coming up soon. And number four, if you want some help right now because you've got a burning issue, you need something solved, you want to lower your taxes, get a second passport, or build the Nomad Capitalist lifestyle of your dreams, go to nomadcapitalist.com and click on Become a Client.